yo guys what is up and welcome back to another episode of the BMW drift build so today the goal is to lock the diff on this car and how we're going to do that we're going to jack her up drop her out there give her a good clean up open it up and weld in some plates to make that diff super strong then we'll be chucking her in some back into the car with some new fluid and running it up to make sure it works okay now the reason we're doing this is it makes the diff a lot more controllable when you're out on the track rather than peeling up one wheel and not having that controllability we should be able to have a lot more easier slides and drifts being able to know what the diff is actually up to the other thing we've got an issue with is the engine has got a low down miss so I'm going to have to get some new plugs or coils and sort that out unfortunately everything's shut at the moment so that's making it a bit difficult but yeah we'll just deal with what we've got and then once everything opens up we can start doing some engine work and start doing that servicing so we'll have to get into it because there's a fair bit to do and I want to get it finished so let's get started Right, so we've got it jacked up. Let's rotate this wheel this way. The other one's doing nothing. So once this is locked, they'll both rotate at the same time. Right, guys, I'm just under the car now. So here's the diff we're trying to pull out. We're going to have to take these bolts off the axles. So obviously, there's an axle on each side to the side and the side. Um, there's three mounting bolts for the diff. So we've got one up in here. One that's forward that comes through this frame, and then one on the other side, and then obviously your drive shaft, which goes through your tunnel down there. So the first thing to do is pull these heat shields off, pull this front brace off, and start taking the drive shaft off. Then we'll do the axles next, and then followed by the mounting bolts when it will drop down. Sometimes you do have to take the sway bar off that runs through, but I'm going to try to keep it up there, and then go from there. As with anything, when you got the car jacked up, make sure you got your jack stands in place, and I've also got a third jack just to hold it up. Alright, the courier's just turned up. It's probably my new jack to replace this bloody heavy one I've been using. This is going to be a lifesaver. Look at that. Woo. Flash as. Saved me a lot of time at the track and stuff like that. Having to blim and lug that thing around. Yeah. Right, just to show you how the diff works. So the front's turning like that. Both these are driving the same direction, but this is actually open diff, so as soon as one of them starts slipping, it'll just spin one side, and as you see this one here is not rotating. And then it starts spinning again, and it's doing the same thing again. As soon as the power can go one way, it just goes one way and spins one wheel. So by locking this, what we'll achieve, these will both drive together the whole time. So we'll pull that apart, weld it up, and she should be good. Alright, so we'll give this a water blast and see what it comes out like. Just because we're going to be removing this rear housing. Saves getting all the dirt and stuff inside there. I'll give me old um, track tires a bit of a clean down as well because they're going into storage. Now that I won't be using my WRX for a while with the coronavirus and all. So we'll get on to the cleaning. Radio, so we've got all the bolts undone in this cover plate. It should just pop off. Alright guys, so we've got all a bit of a clean up in there. She's looking pretty tidy. Got the weld all good to go. Made up some blanking plates that just perfectly fit in there. I'll measure one up for you guys so you just know roughly what size you need. So I'll give this a bit of a clean up. So what I'm going to do first of all is weld the corner of the gears in all four corners, then I'll chuck the plate in the centre and then we'll weld that in there as well. Yeah. So just got the first weld down in there in the corner, we'll do the other four, we'll flip it over to the other four and then we'll go for the rest of it with the plate. So 
we're just literally going to do that for the rest of the way around. So I've just done that quick weld down in there. I'll go around the rest of the plate and that should lock it in there pretty good. Right, so now she's all welded up, plate's all in. I'm just going to put the back housing on and put some oil in it. I've given it a good clean up and got all the extra splatter out of there so it's not going to wear down our gears or anything like that. So as you can see now, when I rotate the front, they both move the same direction as they did before. But if I hold one of these, I'll hold this one actually. If I hold this, I can't actually stop it from rotating. So they're both rotating at the same speed. If I try to go opposite directions here, nothing happens. So she's locked one way. So that's exactly what we want. It's not an open diff anymore, it's fully locked. Cool guys, so we've got the dipper welded up, it's all finished, it's all locked. Um, what we're going to do now is we're going to seal the rear housing off the back of the diff. So how we're going to do that is using some sealant. We're just going to go around here and then chuck this back on. Right, so let's gum this up. Just going to do a thin bead. the refilling of the diff so what we're going to use is Penrite um, limited slip diff gear oil this is an ADW 90 weight and I've had to make up a custom adapter to actually get the bung out because it's a hex fitting I'll show you I suppose it's a 14 mil hex and unfortunately none of the shops are open currently and I don't have one of those most of the ones I've dealt with the square drive so I've had to weld up a um, nut onto a um, 14 mil bolt head which fits in nicely so I've just used that to remove the actual fitting it's a bit rough but it did the job to get it out so yeah so now we're going to go forward to uh, filling the diff with this oil and then we can chuck it back in so what we're aiming for here guys is we're filling the diff up through this upper hole and once it gets to the correct level the oil should just start to come out the back I like to have a little bit more in mine so I will be tilting it forward a little bit just to get a little bit extra in there Alright guys, as you can see there, it's just starting to pour out. So that's at the perfect level now, we can chuck the bung back in and call it good. Hey guys, so here's the diff. We've now got the oil in it, she's all ready to go back up. Drive shaft's there and your two axles, so we're going to have to poke it back up in this hole again, which might be a bit tricky. And then we can just bolt it all up and get this car out of the garage. So we got the diff up now, so now it's just a matter of chucking in the axles and the drive shaft and then we'll be chucking in the three mounting bolts. So we'll put them in and we should be good to go then with our new lock diff. The diff's all done, all under the car's been cleaned out, the whole thing's ready to go pretty much and test it. So what we're going to do is we'll start the car up, I'll chuck it into gear and we'll go around the back. Right, chuck the key in, that's our low oil pressure, so we've got low oil pressure. Start button, there she is. We'll hit that. So, oil pressure's come up. It should go to idle, which it has. Put it into first. There's only one way to test out my welds, and that's to do a mean skid, my G. Yeah, so I kind of f***ed up a bit. Um, 
when I was going for second, it kind of started sliding down a bit, so I decided to clutch in and chop it back to first. Probably wasn't the best move because it um, had a bit of slack in the chain and it's actually broken one of the links and um, yeah, smashed into my uh, engine stand followed by my workbench. So, a bit of a screw up, but um, doesn't look like the damage is too bad. Yeah, so she's just um, touched down in here. Doesn't look like it's done too much to the front, which is the main thing. A few marks. My bad, my bad. I won't be doing that again. A few moments later. Oh well, we'll um, reattach the chain and chuck it back in first and hit it all up again and see what happens. Hopefully this time the chain doesn't break. I'll try and keep the tension on this time. So, oh well, lessons learned, eh? Cheers for watching guys, really appreciate it. Make sure you hit that like button and subscribe and keep up to date with my next build video. Cheers!